All right, so we've dealt with the bucket. We've given you an overview of the ADM, which is a method. So let's now just have a look at the top piece of our sort of three, three segment structure, which is all about visualizing your building blocks and visualizing your architecture. Now, one of the biggest challenges within the architecture space is to avert what we refer to as wall wear. And really, that's just a bunch of bright architects who build really nice pictures, uh, but you bring stakeholders in and it's completely irrelevant to them. It's too complex, it's too busy, doesn't mean anything, doesn't answer any questions. You know, and that's really one of the biggest problems within the architecture space, just architecture for the sake of architecture. So the point is, is you've got to do what we refer to as just enough architecture. And really what that means is that you need to be able to represent your architecture with just the right amount of information to represent the concerns of only a certain group of stakeholders that you're trying to deal with. Now that's, that's, that's all part of this concept of visualizing your architecture. And I'm going to deal later on with a topic specifically around using a technique within TOGAF called views and viewpoints. But let me just give you a quick overview of what that means here. So basically what you have is you have a stakeholder. Right? And this particular stakeholder, he has a series of concerns. In other words, this is the type of thing that keeps this man awake at night, right? or this lady awake at night. It's not their requirements. Their concerns here are broad and more longer lasting. You know, they're concerned about the, the value of the, of the dollar, or they're concerned about you know, the, the, their key staff in their organization, or they're concerned about a hostile takeover. All those types of things are what's bothering him. That will eventually um, materialize in a series of requirements. But ultimately, when we architect, we've got to address these series of concerns. Right? So what we do is we understand what these concerns are for our stakeholder. Right? And then we produce what's referred to as a viewpoint. Right? Now, all that that really means is it's saying, well, how, as an architect, am I going to be able to address this particular uh, stakeholder's concerns? Um, I'm going to give him a diagram, which is going to show him where all of his dollars is invested across a global footprint of business functions. Uh, I'm going to show him uh, where all of his key staff are apportioned across the company. And he'll be able to identify via you know, red and, and green colors whether which staff are being overworked or not. So those are like a different ways that you can try and use some architectural artifacts to deal with specific concerns. And what you do is you document that in a viewpoint, which is really just an instruction set or a schema on how to create a view to address that individual's concerns. And when I refer to a view, well, that's all a, a view is. A view is uh, something that I can see visually. Right? It could be a model, it could be a picture, it could be a schematic. Right? So I'm trying to document the right views, and in order to document a view, I need to understand how to create it, and that's my viewpoint from that perspective. Ultimately, that rolls up into a series of models. Right? And by the way, all of these models eventually make up an architecture model. Right? So that's ultimately what we want to get to. That's all fine and good, but the point of architecture is to create reuse. And that's where this viewpoint comes in. Because what you can do is you can create what we refer to as a viewpoint library. And this viewpoint library is just a way for you to store these recipe sets on how to solve certain problems. So let's say uh, a particular CIO comes on board and he's got a variety of issues. So what, as architects, we go and understand what those concerns are. We go and we build a series of views, we build the models, and we produce an architecture model for him. That CIO leaves, and a new CIO comes on board. As he's going through his set of concerns as he starts his new job, I'm listening for those concerns, because I know that somewhere in my database, I've got those concerns mapped to a viewpoint sitting in the library somewhere, meaning that I can go and quickly find it and quickly rep use a model or a diagram to represent his concerns in a more efficient manner. Instead of going reinventing the wheel, redrawing diagrams, refining all of that information. Now this library, right, all this, that's here, right? TOGAF gives you a set of those. In other words, it gives you a description. So it gives you business, data, application, technology, and it gives you catalogs, matrices, and diagrams. And we've dealt with some of those concepts already. In other words, it breaks it down and says, well, it has a standard set of viewpoints that you can use. 
and these are the types of catalogs you can design, these are the types of diagrams you can design, you can produce a business anchor model, you can produce a business process model, you can produce an actor function matrix. So it gives you a list of those things and that the comprehensive list is available in your additional resources for you to look at and just get a look and feel for. But really that's what we're looking at, we're looking at this piece here which is a reusable asset identifying all the viewpoints that sit across your organisation and TOGAF gives you a starting point to work from. And that really is a summary of some of the visualization aspects, how to visualize all of these pieces in different views using viewpoints to give you the instructions on how to do that. But we will elaborate further on that in our views and viewpoints topic.